we just talking about? Okay, we are, we're all set. Yeah, I mean, you guys can... I can't say that I've ever been surrounded by two top UFC fighters. I feel very <laughs> secure and safe right now. Uh, Frankie Sines, Henry Cejudo, and uh, guys that kind of grew up in the same neighborhood. And this is a little more casual conversation. I want to go back to the neighborhood. What was it like growing up in West Phoenix, and, and how did you guys first meet? Um, well, me, you know, I'm a little older than Henry. Um, you know, so my dad actually uh, started up a wrestling club um, in Maryville, at Maryville High School. And, uh, you know, these guys wrestled over at Pueblo, or his brother did. And, uh, you know, it was kind of more like a, like a feeder program, you know, for Maryville. And so these guys came up, wrestled in the club, and that's how I met all these guys. Um, hmm. You know, uh, growing up, little kids in the wrestling club. I remember Henry is like a. What did you think of Henry when you first saw him? <laughs> <laughs> it was just energetic, oh, very, like man. all energy all the time. Henry right? was a wild kid. Henry was a wild kid. You just look, you're just always shaking your head. My dad was just always shaking his head. <laughs> he's like, man, Henry, he's tough, but man, he's a headache. <laughs> What was it like for you, Henry? <laughs> yeah, no, I think for me, uh, wrestling was an outlet. And I think when, when Frank Sines started the wrestling program, it's, uh, you know, it kind of kept us away from the streets. It kept us away from, uh, you know, from just getting in trouble. Uh, you know, because I grew up on, on 35th and McDowell, 47th and 43rd and, and McDowell and Thomas. Did quite a bit of moving. So when Frank started the wrestling program, we found out that we could actually go to the Olympics and wrestling to me it was just, it was just a good deal. You know, it's kind of interesting. You get that one coach, and it was your dad in this case, that inspires young people. And I know you call them your hero, but you need those mentors, don't you, Frankie? Yeah. You Especially know. in the tougher neighborhoods, let's be honest. Yeah, definitely, you know what I mean? Because there's a, there's a lot of trouble to get into, you know. I mean, he just kept these guys busy. These guys were wrestling year-round, you know, and he got to experience the stuff like taking me to nationals in North Dakota and, you know, going all over the country to wrestle. And, you know, he wanted to do, the, do that for these guys, you know, so they were able to do that, and they just were winning everything. What's amazing to me is that I think it was Michael Johnson, wasn't it? You saw Michael mm -hmm. Johnson and the famed gold shoes at the Olympics, and, and it, it sparked an idea. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, everything starts off with inspiration. I think for me it was watching the 96 Olympics when I saw Michael Johnson uh, shatter the world record with his infamous gold shoes. You know, that, that gave me hope. That, that inspired me to become the best in the world. And I kind of just kept that dream alive, and I found wrestling, and, and it just fit me perfect. It's like I was born with this, like, warrior spirit that, you know, that, to me it came from God, and I'm just using the ability that, that he's given me at, at my full potential. I know if I can do, if, if I can do my best, in, and, and if I can do my best in wrestling, do it in MMA, that, you know, I can, I can become the best at it, too. You know what's amazing to me, and, and Henry's the first ever to, to circumvent collegiate wrestling, go to the, the U.S. trials, win, and then go to the Olympics and win gold. I don't, I, you can't script something like that. It's still amazing to me because I know when you get to that collegiate sport, you can refine your skill level in wrestling. And, and you said, no, I'm going right to the Olympics. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it, it all came, it, it, you know, the thing is, all this, the, this whole lineage pretty much comes from, comes from Frankie's dad. He, uh, he had this attitude. It was, uh, you either do it or you don't do it. <laughs> So I think for me, it was we were raised to be tough, and we were raised to just think and be the best. So it was just it was just a good mash. It really was. We got a question from Jonathan Blinn. He just said, "How did you get started in UFC, Frankie?" Um, you know, I got started. I just uh, you know wanted to do something else. You know, and wrestling just wasn't it. And uh, you know, I I started helping out um, different buddies with the wrestling that were actually fighters. You know, so I got a chance to just go in there and kind of feel it out and grapple a little bit and uh, strike a little bit. And I, I honestly, I just fell in love with it, you know, and just saw myself getting better every day. And, uh, you know, it's came to this. I always find it fascinating because I've asked this to boxers is how do you deal with the most primal of sports, especially now I think UFC, the, the machismo that's needed, the confidence. And let's also face it, man, you can get hurt. You can, you can get crushed. I mean, you're dealing with a lot of emotions. How do you manage that? Well, I think for me, it's, uh, I, I love the fact that it's a challenge. Like anything that makes my heart pump, I, I, I want to challenge that. I want to kind of tame that. I think mixed martial arts gives me that. You know, there's, there's two guys, you know, in the octagon, they lock the door and 
see who's the best. <laughs> I think to me, I, I, I love and I strive off those nerves. I know I, I did something crazy, but I, I, I think it takes a certain fighter to, or a certain somebody to become a fighter. And I think uh, uh, Frankie and myself think we have that. How do you deal with that aspect of it, knowing that you're putting everything on the line? Um, same, I love it. You know what I mean? Like you get up to the cage and you feel all this adrenaline, you know, and it just it's just confidence at that point. You know what I mean? You put the time in, you put the work in, you know, we've done all the rounds and like now it's time to go and you know, it's just, it just feels right. You go in there and it's like, oh, you know, you see the big lights and you're like, it's showtime. You know, there's nothing quite more exciting than that. I mean, we've got Frankie Shines here, one of the top fighters in the UFC, Henry Cejudo, Olympic gold medalist, and now pushing forward with a, a potential shot at a UFC title. You're going to fight in Mexico City coming up in, in just a couple of weeks. I, I think fans just love the intensity, man. UFC on Fox is huge, and when they have a chance to just feel the energy from the crowd and the craziness. I mean, it, it goes viral. It, 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 there's the intensity, as you pointed out earlier, is, was well beyond the, the wrestling mat. Yeah, you feel it. You know, you feel it like you feel the crowd. You know, I know when I fought uh, in Brazil the last time, you know, I felt the I felt the intensity. You know, I felt the hatred towards me. You know, and I, I just loved it. You know what I mean? I came in. I knew I was I was coming in, and it was a business trip for me. You know, came in, got the job done, and got out. But uh, you know, I loved every second of it. I, I want to get your take on, on some of the per personalities. When I say Ronda Rousey, what, what is it? I mean, she's uh, like a tidal wave. She's overtaken the women's. <laughs> I mean, wh how do you how do you look at her? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, is this a trick question? No, I'm just I'm just kind of look. At, she's she's she is really driving women's UFC, and I, I you know you see her on magazine covers, you see her on fitness <clears throat> magazines. Some say she's almost too dominant for, for the women's sport. And I'm just kind of curious to yeah, get your well, take on I, it. Yeah, I would, say, I would say she is the best in the world at, at, as of this point. But, you know, the sport of women's MMA is still growing. I think she's well ahead of her time. But, you know, you, you still have, uh, you know, Cyborg. That's no joke. You know, you still have a tough uh, wrestler girls that are transitioning to MMA. So uh, I'm curious to see how she can do against uh, maybe somebody like Cyborg that's that's become a world champion that knows how to strike. Uh, I think that's the matchup, you know, to really determine how good Ronda Rousey is. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we're seeing Ronda, Ronda, Ronda. Um, <laughs> you know, she is happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I have I to edit out will. some of these comments right here. <laughs> maybe maybe you're referring to me there, Jane. Uh, but. Uh, you know, when you look at goals in, in, in UFC and you believe that you're not far from a title match as well, Frankie, where are you at in your career? Let, let our viewers kind of know you may have a fight coming up in Florida. And, and what's your hopeful timeline to get a title shot? Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping by next year. You know, I mean, I just I, I got to win a couple more fights. Um, and with me as you know, I'll fight anybody. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not scared to put it out there put it on the line, and uh, I feel like I'm probably the scariest dude in the division for anybody to fight right now. Right, that's the way to sell it, that's for sure, man. I love it, man. You got, well, I see how you, hard you guys work, and, and I know you've got a fabulous, fabulous trainer in Roland Siller up, and not only do you guys work together, but the wealth of knowledge from Roland is, is key, is it not, Henry? Oh, no, absolutely. Roland is, uh, he's like a MMA encyclopedia. I mean, he's just creative but yet yeah, sticks to the basics and uh, it, it either works or it doesn't there's nothing in between and I think Roland you know which is our trainer that he was part of, he was one of the pioneers that started MMA and uh, now we get a chance to pick his brain and learn from from his strengths and also from his mistakes so we've uh, you know we're, we continue to evolve because we're around people like Roland Silverock. Do you ever look at your career and say I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm kind of carrying the banner for my neighborhood because I want to prove that there's the right journey to take. Address that, frankly. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm representing a lot, you know, as far as my neighborhood, my family, you know, the people I grew up with, um, you know, and, you know, I kind of, I did, I had a different route than Henry, obviously, you know, I kind of went and had my times where I struggled, you know, and I had to just find myself, I had to refine myself and figure out I knew I was destined for something great, and uh, you know I feel like UFC's it, you know.
and, and I, I, you talk about journeys. I mean, I, I remember we did a speaking engagement a couple of years ago, and there was at one point in your your teenage years, man, you're you're on the streets. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think for the long, I think just growing up, uh, you know, a single parent home, it was you know it was just a humble way of, of living. But I think if, if anything, that's taught me what it is to survive and what it is not to have anything, and what it is to actually go and try to get something. So I think that's something that we, we've always had. Um, you know, maybe at times we, we didn't have, we didn't eat during the summers or air conditioning was out, you know, hot, on a hot summer day in, in Phoenix. But, uh, you know, it, it only built and, and, and molded me into the person I am today. You know, it just builds your character. So part of me, I think it's, uh, it's being an inspiration to others and letting them know that, you know, the struggle, the suffer, it's, it's only going it's, 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 it's to lead you to a path of success if you believe it so. So, so don't don't stop on the suffering. You know, once you overcome the suffering, you will reach success. I think that's maybe the the inspiration coming from a challenging situation. You're you're out to prove. You're out to, you know, go for it. And you know, you want to show that, hey, man, this there's a way to uh, to do it the right way. Um, we do have some questions, and you can. You ever wrestled the midget, Ricky? There are a lot of them. <laughs> Did you ever <laughs> wrestle a a short person? <laughs> Me. Have I ever wrestled a short person? <laughs> I know, <have>. uh, <laughs> I wrestle this guy all the time. Good question. Oh, uh, man, I'll tell you what. Um, okay, here's another one. Uh, how does the UFC, the workouts, compare to the training you all do? In other words, you know, you see a lot of people, including myself on occasion, do an MMA workout. And there's, there's a fitness benefit to that, certainly. Mm -hmm. But when you're really fighting, it's at, all, obviously, a whole other level. Oh, absolutely. You, the, the, I think the biggest thing is the actual nerves. If you can overcome the nerves, uh, it'll be a little easier. But a lot of fighters, they uh, they put so much stress on themselves prior to the fight that they don't they don't go out there and actually perform. So I've always learned to uh, to embrace pressure and to admire it and to hug it because you know if if, if you win, you're gonna have a target on you. If you lose, you're just gonna have another target on you. So either way, you're in a situation where you're gonna have a target. So. But I would say that, that it's, it's a yes and no. But definitely, if you can overcome those nerves, it, it, it could be somewhat light training. There's a question from Joe Foley, and I'm not familiar with this gentleman here. Uh, he's not followed UFC. Do you know a guy named Michael Bisping? And is he still fighting? Yeah, actually, I just saw, uh, he just fought uh, CB Dalloway, um, maybe like a couple weeks ago, um, won his fight. and. Um, you know, he's, he's a little older guy, but he's still doing it. He's still winning. He's still winning fights. This is kind of a hub. I mean, you, you, look, you look at the ASU wrestling culture, and you look at the gyms in, in Arizona, and this has really become a hub for a lot of fighters. I mean, we can go through a long list of connections yeah. to Arizona, uh -huh. correct? Yeah, there's something about the Arizona heat. There's something about the water here. <laughs> I don't know what it <laughs> it's is. It's in the water. It it's is in the water. <laughs> the tap water. I don't know what it is, but it's, uh, it's cre you know, it's, it's created a bunch of champions. I think... You know, for wrestling, it's one of the toughest sports on earth, and now we get a chance to, you know, make it lucrative and by doing mixed martial arts. So it's just a bunch of tough people that can now make a living out of it, and I think that's why people are transferring over. Here's a question from uh, from Jane Wilcox, uh, Henry Frankie. Do you do anything special to get prepared for a fight? Music, meditation, preparation. What's it like? Um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm a big music person. You know, these guys, I'm always blasting my music like. I'm always pulling out my, my headphones, like when coach is trying to talk to me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, trying to pull it out. But me, I'm more, you know, I, I meditate, you know, I get myself into the zone, I crank up the music, I listen to a little tool, maybe a little Rage Against the Machine, and it kind of gets me pumped up, ready to roll. How about you, Henry? I, I'm a little different. I'm actually more of a, like, Spanish romantic music. Like, that's what kind of calms me down, like, re it relaxes me. It, it, it makes me understand, like, why I'm fighting, like, the purpose and the reasoning behind my fist and I think uh, for me that's that's the way I do it but with music or no music I'm just so accustomed to just doing things off the cuff. <laughs> what, what is your you know the obvious question here is you don't know, want to become champion but what is it that inspires you to work and dedicate yourself to this sport on a daily basis I mean what what is it that drives you is it out to prove is it out to to, to get a, a, a belt is it I'm going to prove that somebody from the neighborhood can do this. I mean, what is your inspiration? You know, I mean, I want, I want to be a champ. You know, I want to be a world champion. I want to win that belt. You know, it's part of my inspiration, like my family. You know, I want to support them. I want to be the best man I can be, be the best at what I do. 
you know, and I feel like winning a belt <laughs> is exactly that. You know, there's a question, Frankie Sines, any relation to my colleague Richard Sines, uh, who was uh, <laughs> our, our, of course, fine sports reporter here. Uh, no, there isn't. Um, what was the toughest part? There was another question before we lost that, that uh, panel there. What was the toughest part of going to MMA in terms of learning a new skill? You already had your wrestling down. What was the challenging part of becoming a complete fighter for you? I think it's just protecting my head, my neck. Um, I think as a wrestler, we're so used to double-legging people or you know, single kind of throwing the head out, head to the outside. You just have to protect that. It's uh, you know, it's still wrestling, but it's a little more, it's a little more detail. You got knees coming in. You have, uh, you have kicks. You have elbows. And you just have to be careful in every area. Speaking of knees, you enjoy the flying knee from time to time. Oh, that's one of your specialties. <laughs> but what was the what was the challenge for you in evolving into a UFC fighter? Was it the striking? Was it you already had the ground game down, obviously with your wrestling, I'm yeah. sure. But I mean, yeah, it was the striking too. But even my wrestling, like being a wrestler for MMA, you know what I mean? There's a lot of good wrestlers that just can't convert, you know, over to over to the strikes and just being able to set everything up and uh, you know not being not being afraid to get hit. I think that was the biggest thing is. You think you're supposed to slip and you're supposed to miss and you're supposed to block every single thing that comes at you. You can't. But in a fight, you're you gonna, you're gonna get hit. You know. Well, taking a punch is a big part of this, isn't it? I mean, there's, you know, look, it's impossible not to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it'll ring your bell. I think people underestimate. It's not boxing. The, I mean, the glove is pretty much just to protect your hand, not to protect somebody's face. It's a four ounce glove. I mean, it hurts, and it could get through when you when you may not see it coming, or you'll see it coming, but somehow. It'll slip through because a hand's so small. Yeah, it's not you, boxing. You know, there's there's so much to it, and I think that's what I find fascinating. And you, I guess you could say it's as close to an all-out street fight, with the best possible preparation that you can acquire in preparing yourself for that battle. Definitely. You know, you come in. You know, we get prepared. Like we, <laughs> we get prepared um, quite a bit throughout the whole camp. We try to have a six to an eight-week camp. You know, and. It's me against this guy, you know, and I'll take my camp into battle with any of these guys any day of the week. Yeah, you, you guys have a great passion and dedication. I, I occasionally pop in and, and watch you guys work, and your, uh, your heart and effort is, is admirable. And, and I, like I said, I think this isn't just another sports story. This is really, um, you know, we have another question coming in. Any pre-match rituals? Are you guys superstitious at all? Do you wear like a lucky socks or do you, or do you have anything? I actually don't change my underwear for a week. You're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to say, we're going to talk to you about that ritual. We've got to definitely address, we definitely have to address that. Um, no, no we got to get you a you no, know, laundry kidding. certificate or something. Yeah, that was, that was fly. Fly. I think the newsroom just woke up here. Oh, that's funny stuff. No, I'm kidding. I, I think for me, Jude, I don't, I don't have any rituals or superstitions because I'm just, uh, I'll forget. That. Like going in there and, you know, you put the time in, you know, and his thing is always with me and even with these guys is like telling us like we're the best, you know, you're the best, you put the work in, you know, right. nobody can Confidence. beat you, you're the champion, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, I like hearing that even, sure. the, even though I'm just like, dad, dad, all right, that's right. enough. But, you know, it just, it just gets me motivated to go. Confidence is everything, isn't it, Henry? It is, it is, and I think that's, I can also say that's my biggest attribute that I have. And I may even be cocky in some sense, but I've always had that since I was a kid. Like, I've never, I, I, I never doubt myself, you. I can honestly say that. I don't you know what? I'm, let's be honest. You don't want to go into the ring or to the octagon <laughs> you, you and can. have any doubts. You can't. You can. I mean, I mean I, you know, any fighter will tell you at any level, whether it's boxing, wrestling, UFC, you got any kind of doubt, you got problems. You know, yeah. you cannot have doubts. I mean, because it, it's the ultimate machismo in many ways is it yeah, not it's it's like you're kind of self uh manipulating yourself i i i, I never take it there you might try to play games with you at times but it's uh you overcome it with with preparation the more you the more you shape your body the more you the more you shape your mind and that's how, that's how it comes to it so we train hard every day with with roland and uh and tommy ortiz and benny madrid and uh you know we're just we're just grinding all day you guys have already fought some big crowds i mean you're down in brazil you're gonna be in mexico city there's gonna be people hanging off the rafters <laughs> i mean this, this is gonna be crazy down there how yeah. was brazil 
Oh, Brazil is crazy. You know, we actually, uh, we got put up, we got treated pretty nice out there. We had Team Nogueira kind of picking us up like 10 o'clock at night to go train, you know, because that's the time I was going to be fighting. Um, but yeah, when we got in the in the arena, you know, I, I really, I didn't really look around. You know, I heard all the boos and I heard everybody booing all the Americans and stuff, but, um, you know, it was exciting. Well, here's another question from Blaine asking, muscle mass or quickness, what's more important in winning? I'll throw that to you, Henry. Uh, I'm not to say quickness. I think muscle mass looks pretty. Looks good for the looks good for the women. <laughs> but, uh, quickness, but quick, yeah, quickness, quickness, and being precise is is the key. Any wrestler of all time that you would you want to fight, or is there somebody out there, probably current champion you'd like to fight? I mean, are you, do you have a target uh, out there? Um, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be uh, pretty interested in that July 25th fight. You know, Varel and Dillashaw. You know, the weather. Right, right. The thing, the difference is, is if I grab a hold of you, it's uh, it's not going to be nice. Right, right. I like the way you said that. I like the way, like I said, I feel very confident and secure right now between Henry and Frankie. Yeah, well, this has been a lot of fun. I, I, I do want to give you guys a chance to kind of talk to fans out there and also say, what, what is it um, that they should know about UFC, the amount of dedication and hard work that it takes? I, you know, we always see the finished product on TV, but people really don't see all the many weeks and months and years that go into it, the dedication that goes into it. Yeah, I mean, all these UFC guys have a story, you know what I mean? And and a lot of it was just, you know, they fell on some hard times. And they, to get to this process, you know I mean, you have to give up everything, you know, in your life to be able to do this full time and be successful at it, you know. And it's a lot of these guys that go in there, they put everything on the line, and there's only one guy that leaves with two checks, Yeah. you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of hard work put, in, put into these fights. Here's an interesting question. Now, here's what, what's funny, because Blaine asked, how many seconds would it take to put Mayweather down and out? Now, I will, t and I probably shouldn't say this, but Roland, the trainer for these guys, would like to fight Mayweather, but UFC rules, um, and I feel confident, believe it or not, with UFC Roland, Roland could, <laughs> could do quite well. Um, what are your thoughts about that when it comes to a UFC fighter against a boxer. I mean, I, I you know, I know that's a theoretical question. Yeah, well, I don't even think there's a comparison. To be quite honest with you, unless Mayweather was a world class wrestler, then I'd be then I'd be scared. But uh, Mayweather wouldn't make it out a minute thirty seconds with me. He really wouldn't. I, I mean that. And I, I mean, and, and, I, and I would bet all the money I have. <laughs> on that, I know he likes to bet. He likes to bet on himself, right? He just wouldn't. He, I mean, what, I'd, I'd know, pass him out. I'd knock him out. Uh, or I'd break one of his... Oh, damn, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should tone it down a little bit. No, you know, but I mean, let's face it, though. You're, a boxer really is dealing with, you know, from the waist up. I mean, it, it, it's a very limited... I, I, I respect boxers, the, the guys that put it out there in a very different way. Yeah. But you're dealing with such a different element yeah. when it comes to every aspect of taking a guy down, of, of holds, sure. submissions, of striking, of wrestling. So there, it, it's a, it's you know, it's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, romper room versus somebody that's got a college degree. You're you're throwing a lot of different schools of thought at him from the world of MMA. Now, here's a quick question: any any thoughts on uh, Anderson Silva, Silva uh, where he's at in his career? Yeah, no, I think he needs to soul search a little bit uh, with Anderson Silva. I think there's just some soul searching with Anderson Silva, John Jones, a lot of these guys have. Uh, that kind of fell off a little bit, you know, steroids or, you know, personal problems. They need to really kind of gather themselves and come back and come come back strong. And come back and, you know, and, and doing things, uh, you know, the, the, the political feels to me, it's, it's very inspirational because they understand how great this country is. And to me, when I see that, it motivates me to, you know, to become the best because I have the opportunity and I can really seriously manifest my dream. When you look at beyond fighting when that day comes to walk away is it coaching is it going to be teaching I mean what, what what do you see in the long term for your career um you know just I mean same with Henry like I, I would like to go back finish my degree you know and and you know eventually I, I've always wanted to coach high school wrestling you know be a high school coach be a teacher you know so I mean that's a possibility Certainly, uh, you know I, I think it's interesting too. It's it's giving back. You you know what your coaches meant to you, uh -huh. and the mentors along the way meant to you. And, and I I find it interesting. There's there's such an interesting culture in wrestling that I find fascinating, in that there's a, there's a certain brotherhood. 
yeah. that you don't see in a lot of sports, but you definitely see with, with the wrestling culture, going back to your roots in wrestling, is that there, there's a fraternity there that's special, isn't, it? isn't yeah, that so? Yeah, it's, it's, wrestling's like no other sport is because I think we've, we've all cut weight, we've all have been through struggle, we've, we've all competed, we've all won, we've all lost. And I think there's a certain mutual respect when you can stick around a sport for so long that at one point you love it, and at another point you probably started to hate it. And you making, know, making weight, man. I, you know, yeah. I know very good friends from high school and college that that wrestle, and, and just the the amount of dedication to to sweat it off either a few hours before or a few days before is beyond uh, what and normal athletes do, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, even as a young person, you know, I go back and think about the, the crazy stuff I used to do for wrestling tournaments, and I had no idea about nutrition, I had no idea about cutting weight. You know, you just saw that mark, and you had to make that mark, you know, and you knew you probably had to sweat it off, you know, but, you know, being like 14, 13, you know, whatever years old, and just having that discipline at a young age to not – eat something in the refrigerator sure, sure. <laughs> you know I think it just it's it's brought me a long ways discipline that, that's what's amazing to me what it takes and, and it, that extends of course into the UFC as well we, we continue to get a few more questions here and let's see what we have or more notes here um, Joe Full you know final thoughts guys you, you've got uh, a fight in Mexico City and anything you want to say to your fans out there as you get set to, to head to uh, Next no, week, no, you City. guys, please tune in uh, June 13th. I'll be the main event on Fox Sports 1. And then just out there to you know, represent not just uh, my city, my state, but also my country. So you guys, please tune in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. So Keep it going. Yeah. And, and you will probably, Frankie Signs, be looking at maybe what, Florida in yeah. late June. What can you tell us? Um, you know, I'm looking to get on that June 27th card. Uh, I'm just waiting for an opponent. You know, I mean, any day now I should hear. I'm, I'm in training camp with uh, Henry. Um, we'll be going to Mexico City on Monday. And, um, you know, so we'll be down there for a couple of weeks. So yeah. training never stops. Well, well, we'll keep an eye on you. And, of course, it's uh, UFC on Fox as well. Frankie Science, Henry Cejudo. Two amazing stories from the neighborhood to uh, really a global journey with wrestling and now UFC. And we'll be watching closely. We, we could be looking at two champions from the same neighborhood here in Phoenix, and it's an amazing, remarkable story. And, and I'll say this on a personal level, having known these guys and watched them in the gym with Roland, is that two quality, quality individuals, good people that are doing it for the right reasons and, and take time, and two gentlemen. Uh, I, I, you know, I always sit there and say it's not just winning, about winning championships, it's how you conduct yourself, and you guys are, you guys are first class, and it's, it's been fun to kind of watch it through the years in the gym. And, and uh, there's no question about it. it it's uh, been a great story for both of you. Wish you the best. Thank you, Jude. Yeah, no, thank you, Jude. We appreciate it. Outstanding. Phil Brooks, uh, by the way. Oh, CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's All his right, actual so, name? There you go. CM Punk. <laughs> Thanks for, thank <laughs> yeah, you for stopping, we'll, guys. We'll we appreciate it. You got it. I appreciate it. Thank you.